again, or as usual, looking here at the local gov Drupal distribution. And uh, what I want to try to do is uh, we've got CSS here, which gives us a background color and you know sets widths and merge and all that. So on a sub team, we might want to remove all that. So t t the a specific council might decide, yeah, I like the HTML uh, that that's here, but I want to use custom fully custom CSS for myself. So I'm going to use your classes and your layout structure, but I, I'm going to actually change all the colors and you know how, how things lay out and fonts and everything else. And that's fair enough. So let's um, let's get all these killed. Oh, don't save. I have no idea what's, what that's going to save or not save at the moment. Hopefully it's okay. Um, okay, we'll close up all of these and we'll start opening again. Teams, custom, contrib, local gov base, local gov base dot theme. Now let me see. I want to uh, log in here. Okay, and okay, so we're logged in. Should be logged in here as well, and I am on the. Uh, local gov base team that's uh, set as default. Okay, we have experimental do not use yet, so this isn't this isn't ready. So we're we're very much early kind of alpha alpha days with this. Uh, Drupal create team settings. Okay, so I actually don't know how to do this. I, I, I did it on a on a team a couple of weeks back, so I'm gonna gonna have to read up on it again. Uh, creating advanced team settings. Let's see. Uh, okay, so this looks like it's not too much effort. Let's say we get this much code here, and we can put this in our dot team file. So that's this here local gov base dot team, and this is going to be called local gov underscore base form system team settings alter. Workaround for a core bug affecting admin teams. See issue this. If is set form ID return. Okay, so I guess we need to leave that here. And form foo example. Let's call this um, uh, use use CSS. So what's going to happen is that uh, if somebody odd sets this. Our libraries won't load, or at least a subset of our libraries won't load. Uh, type here is going to be uh, boolean, so it's either on or it's off. Title text widget. Uh, I guess this is what we put in. Add CSS from Team or something like that. It's just a string, so it's not going to matter. Default value team gets settings foo examples. So that will be here. And description. Uh, uncheck this box if you if you want to disable the teams. CSS. Okay, let's refresh our page. See, is that all we need to do? I think there's a bit more than that. So we click on the settings tab here. Okay, and I guess we clear the cache. Team hooked to local base team. All right, you are missing something. Ah, up here. Angle bracket. So now we got some PHP, and we'll clear the cache again. And I don't have that setting. Let me see now. Um, it's it's always good to clear the cache again, isn't it? Okay, let's see, do I need to 
uninstall the team and then reinstall the team. So if I set uh, this as default to look up Drupal team. And then if I uninstall local gov base, okay, and maybe I'll clear the cache. Okay, hang on just two seconds. The postman's at the door. Okay, so the cache is cleared again, and now let's uh, reinstall this team, local gov base, and once that's installed, we'll set it as default, and click the settings, local image, hmm, let's come back here again. So settings page should appear admin appearance settings team name. Admin appearance settings team name. So we add a PHP function to either team name or team or team settings a PHP file. In one of those files, a team should use team name, form system team, okay. Format as well as the Okay, here's an example. You had a foo team. Once you had a text field whose default value was blue bike shed. Add the following to that. We've done that. In order to set the default value for any form element, you add you will need to add a config install team dot team settings yaml file with a simple line setting name default value for our foo team. You need to edit a foo config install foo settings yaml file. Okay. Okay, so we need to create a file called team settings.yaml file in config slash install. So over here in local gov base, we need to have a new file in config slash install slash local gov base dot settings dot yaml. Okay, and inside that we need to say a foo example blue bike shed. And ours was called not that. What was ours called? Uh, UCSS, and our value was. Oh yeah, true. And we come back here, and I think I'm going to need to import these settings or something now. Am I? Yeah. Let's maybe just clear the cache again and see what happens. <coughs> okay, so that doesn't work. So let's see if we come to config development and config sync. And looks like we've got nothing here to import. So I think I might need to uninstall this team again. So we'll inst that this is default. We'll uninstall local gov base and I think then rein reins well let's maybe I like to clear our cache a lot here just to make sure that's not the the trip up in a, in a moment. So now we're going to reinstall the uh, base team and see does that give us a settings page for it. So we'll just install it first. <coughs> Excuse me, and let's see what the settings page says now. Hmm, still not working. Uh, set it as default. Check the settings. Oh, excuse me. Uh, In any of your team's future, you can retrieve the value set by calling that. Okay. Hmm. 
Hmm. I'm going to have to look at what I did uh, a couple of weeks back to see what's different to this. Uh, let's just check the config sync here again. Still no change. Oh, I wonder if this needs to go into my normal config sync directory here because we've already got config here from the install. And is that correct? Local gov base that settings that YAML. Um, team dot settings that YAML. Okay. Now if we refresh this. No. Okay, Marky, we got an issue here. Let's get this out of here. Um, don't need that. <coughs> Look, we got base. I'm gonna copy in the full actual example from here just see if that gives anything different make sure that's something that I've uh, that I might have broken um, refresh well we got the widget okay I've done something wrong so what have I done wrong Type is boolean, which is what I want. I want it to be on off. The title should be fine. Team get settings, get setting, view CSS, and description. I don't know what I've done wrong here. Okay, I did it in this team here, LGD, a few weeks back. So let's check what's in here. Um, LGD.team. Ah, it's a checkbox, not a boolean. Okay, so we can comment out this for now. I notice somebody watching this that's screaming, Mark, it's a checkbox, it's a checkbox. You know, it needs to be a checkbox or it needs to be a, uh, a radio. So add CSS from team, yes. Uncheck this box if you want to disable the team's CSS. So that can go on and off. Now, if I... Turn that off and save. It looks good. Turn it on and save. Cool. What was happening when I did originally a couple of weeks back was this wasn't saving, and it wasn't saving because we didn't have the the uh, local gov base that settings that YAML with this set to true to give it an actual default value. So every time you, you changed it, or whether you changed it or not, it just kept coming back to being to being on. So we want the team CSS to be on. So now let's see if we can. Um, if we can get the the uh, get the value so if I'm going to say here foo example team get setting foo example so that if we can um, let's see we got a function uh, uh, local gov where we go with preprocess and preprocess node I guess yeah just want to check this for us for for a moment here first we'll get a bit more complex in a second so local gov underscore base p process node variables so foo example so we're going to say uh, use css equals team get settings use css or team get setting um and then i want to let's say uh let's just print uh, use CSS just see what we get from it then okay so we'll if we're on a node page like we are here and we flush these caches that should kick in so up here we get uh, one you see here in the, in the corner so that means it's true and each of these nodes these are embedded nodes all says one 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 Okay, now if we go to close this one, I think. If I switch this off and I come back, we should get zeros. Okay. 
and then I could do something like uh, variables uh, use CSS equals um, use CSS I think yeah let's just check uh, if we come down to templates node um, I'm gonna go to teaser template here just because it's easier to see items down here where these teasers are than up here in the corner where the where the main node is so inside a teaser template now I should be able to call the uh, the variable use C CSS okay that's it down here so let's just for um, can we use CSS and then we we'll put in use CSS here so it makes it a bit easier to read okay so can we use CSS zero so that means it's switched off and I don't need that file anymore I'll come back to here we don't need to print this anymore either um, So let's uh what what might we call this? Um <coughs> what I want to do is say something along the lines of uh you know if you CSS is one um actually let me just see U C S S if uh use CSS we can use CSS else we can not use CSS what do we get hey doggy it's dinner time for the dog okay so we cannot use CSS because it's switched off and then if we switch it back on here we can use CSS this is looking good okay so if you were to create a base team now you, you, you could do something like um, we've got a teaser um, teaser library here so what we could do is, say is if use CSS so if somebody actually wants to use the CSS here then we attach that library there and if they don't want to use the CSS, we don't attach that 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 library. Um, and that's that's pretty handy. So inside a node template for ourselves, but we might want to do this all over the um, all over the website, and we, we, we want to do do it, you know, on, on be able to call this variable from any page. So I, I have a module actually on Drupal.org uh, projects MGV. So this is uh, more global variables is is what MGV st GV stands for, and that allows us uh, get global variables from different places across um, across the website and print them in any template, so that you can you can print, for example, the current page title anywhere at all. That's something I use at the end of my breadcrumbs to give the current page title, um, your site name, site slogan, so we don't have to have function. So I don't want this function here called inside. Uh, hook preprocess node because this is only ever going to run on on node, and I want every template to be able to have a if you CSS um, variable for itself. So what we can do is I'm going to actually copy this slightly from not slightly act directly from where I did this last. Oh, actually, I created a custom module for this. What I was doing was adding a, a couple of say Gov UK and NHS UK um, design systems into this website. And then having a uh, where's my templates directory and layout. What we did then was said things like um, if NHS UK design system, we get this class here, and if uh, NHS again is here, and then if we didn't, if we had the Gov UK design system 
I can't see an example of that in this template, but we, we, we'd load that, that instead, and that allows us to have different design systems all within the same team. It, it becomes a bit complex when you're for a kind of scalable system. So I'm, I'm not used to get into current new base team for local gov Drupal. Um, but what, what I do have in, oops, what did I do? Uh, oh no. Uh, okay, yeah. Let's get rid of this and that. Uh, so what I do have is I'm going to grab a global variable. I'm going to create a global variable. And with this global variable, what I'm going to do is allow this to be printed in any template. So I've got this in a custom module, I think it is here, called uh, LGD Design System. And what we've done here is I've, I've uh, we're creating this this uh, default variables alter. So it's, these are default variables, which means they can be anywhere on the website. So I'm going to copy this from here and put that into here. And uh, this will be localgov underscore base template preprocess default variables alter. And then if team gets setting NHS. UK. So what we're going to see is, uh, so I'm going to need an if on that. Yeah. So if, so if this is set, so if team get setting UCSS is set, then we'll say variables UCSS equals true. All right. So now I can delete this. And variables UCSS had, CSS should be the exact same now as what we have here if UCSS. And I'm going to put in a, a P here. We can use CSS and else we cannot use CSS. And this should all be in a P tag. All right, so we'll come back here. We need to clear the cache again to pick up the new um, the new function and remove the old hook preprocess node function. And let's see what happens. We cannot use CSS. Okay, hopefully that's because this is switched off here. No, nope, it's switched on. And if we switch it off, what happens? We cannot use CSS. All right, so we've got an issue, and I think the issue might be um, I've got a feeling maybe template preprocess default variables alter can't be called from uh, the .team file, but I'm not sure of that. Um, so what did we put down here? So we said if we're using NHS UK design system, we get this class and if we're not we get the gov uk design system class okay so this part here doesn't bother us so it's only this i wonder then can this be um <coughs> can this not be called from a dot team file that's why we might need it in a module look template preprocess default variables alter Alter default hook independent variables for all templates allows modules to provide additional default template variables or manipulate existing. This hook is invoked from template preprocess after basic default template variables have been set up and before the next template preprocess function is invoked. Note that the default template variables are statically cached within a request. When adding a template variable that depends on other contexts, it's your responsibility to appropriately reset the static cache in template preprocess when needed. Hmm. So variables is admin Drupal current user has permission access administration pages and these go in allows modules. Can we do this in a team? No, I don't 
don't think so. Okay, so I guess then to use this in local gov uh, Drupal, we're going to need to create a custom module or else we're going to have to put it inside um, home welcome block what do we have here yeah in one of these modules here we got what modules contrib local gov something um local gov core dot module and let's take this from here and we pop it in here and see what happens uh, this is what template preprocess vote variables that's this one here okay and then the name of this changes to local of underscore core template preprocess default variables alter if that said that okay now let's come back here and clear the cache yet again and we cannot use CSS and here we are told it's switched off and we switch it back on and now we can use CSS okay so where might we turn this on and off well we've got css on the uh on these buttons here so let's let's have a look at that and, and, and see it working um so we'll come back here to our actually eat all this um where is that that's in the local gov services landing full no it's not the cta blocks i think it is uh, serve as a CTA block here. I think this here, yeah, the service is call to action block. And oh, we don't have a library loading here because this only ever appears on the uh, services landing page content type. So we need to place it here. So let's say, ah, here it is, yeah, the service CTA block. So let's say uh, if you CSS. So now this is set to true, I think it is. We can use CSS, so yeah, so when we refresh the page then this should work. And now when we come here and turn off the CSS, and refresh this page, it's broken. So now you can see you got no CSS here and we got the larger icons. So what this will then allow is a sub team can switch off that CSS because they just want to use the template we have here with the with the um the classes that we've created but they don't want to use the css and don't want to have to unset lots of css libraries or they don't want to uh, load extra css on on their website and we, we can we can do this then for uh javascript as well so we can have if you css attach we could have this library called something like uh, css and then a second one because say for example something on a maybe an accordion or whatever you might say yeah I want to use the JavaScript but I don't want to use the CSS so if we say use CSS and use JS and then we'll just create two different libraries one called service CTA block JS and one called service CTA block CSS I think for the moment I might just use leave it at, hmm. actually we don't have that much JavaScript created it's not going to be a huge amount of what do we have we've got JavaScript in the header only that will be pretty good okay yeah and then I just need to go back now and rewrite the names of the libraries and then start putting these if you CSS and if use JS um, conditionals around each but that is it I guess that's how you create a let's turn it back on just to make sure it does work uh, that's how you create a settings page in Drupal I, I should probably put them inside these nice vertical tabs or whatever as well that would have would have custom settings uh, I haven't actually tested it this will work on a sub team um to see to see that it, it gets switched on or switched off for uh, it within the sub team i'm not going to go through that now either because like i said a moment ago the dog needs to get fed uh so this should turn the css back on nope uh did i save this ah uh, 
Oh yes, we changed the library name, didn't we? Yeah, there we go. That's pretty cool. I'm happy with that. Uh, let's stop this unless there are any questions here on the Twitch channel. Uh, I'll get Lord VK. Thank you very much. Why didn't I look at <laughs> look at this twenty minutes ago? Uh, try team get setting UCSS. Okay, I think we got that sorted. So, is this a settings form outside of normal settings tab on appearance? Uh, I'm not sure I follow that question exactly. If this is a settings form outside the normal settings tab, uh, here's our settings tab for local gov base. Here's the settings tab here, and it's an extra. Uh, oops, sorry, that's global settings. Uh, local gov base tab here, and we saw earlier on it. It is an extra item out here. Yeah, and we probably should put it inside a. Um, a vertical tab or something on its own, um, but it, I, I mean for a proof of concept type approach, that's that's good enough here. I think what, what we'll end up then with in a later on will be um, by later on I mean in five minutes will be use JS and use JS. Uncheck this box. Want to disable the Teams JavaScript and I. Adds JS from team, and we should get a second one here now. Yeah, so that's that's going to allow us to turn on, on and off the JavaScript, and that means we, we're not going to then have a, a a base team that's just HTML and a second team that allows some styling that you, and you can decide then which which you want to use as base. Everything can be within the one team, and it's just a simple on off uh, checkbox here. So I guess I need to create a pull request for that in local gov core, and uh, if we accept it. Um, or else create a custom module if we don't want it in the core system. That is that. Any more questions? Nope. I am out of here. Talk to you all soon. Oh, here's one. Don't forget the default value in the... Yeah, I got that. That's going in for the... Do you know what? I'll do it now. Uh, no. Uh, what? Let me go base install here. So you see as true. Use... JS true okay oh that was Matt Clement asking a question oh hi Matt <laughs> great to see you on one of my uh, one of my twitches I've been I've been lurking in yours so much and, and thanks for uh, thanks for chipping in there I, I don't see I know you, you miss some questions sometimes I don't see these at all until I come back to this because I'm on the laptop and I, I have the full screen takeover that's it folks thanks very much bye